Hi again then guys and welcome to another car review of course from back in the day in Project Gotham 4 this time talking about one of my favourite performance bargains actually in real life and this is a car which I'm planning to review in real life on the channel as well in a road test review the Bentley Continental GT from the earlier 2000s this is such a high performance bargain it's literally one of the quickest cars around for its used prices and interestingly this is for me at least one of those occasions where as much as i like the facelifted versions and the faster ones that came after it my favorite is this original the around 2004 shape continental gt to me is essentially a perfect car it's a fantastic all-rounder in real life of course there's so much more to it than you ever need to use in the game the luxury the comfort etc in the game you're looking primarily at performance so speaking about performance what can it actually do in Project Gotham? Because yes, it's a street racing game, high-powered cars are typically going to be good for that, but still, it's a Bentley. It's a really big, heavy Bentley, so is it going to be that good on a game where most of the circuits are pretty tight and very twisty with 90-degree corners, etc.? So how good is it? How good could it really be, even? Well, it's category E which is kind of low actually, probably lower than you'd be expecting for a borderline 200 mile an hour car, but that's kind of the point. It is something of a sleeper. Yes, it's a Bentley, yes, it's this big twin turbo W12 monster in a straight line, but it's actually one of the heaviest cars on the road. The Bentley Continental GT weighs 2.3 metric tons. That is literally on par with some SUVs. And I'm not talking about small SUVs either. This is an extremely heavy car for the exact same reason as the Bugatti Veyron and the Nissan GTR. And that is, it is so heavily packed with luxury and technology that it just makes it an extremely dense vehicle. In fact, my car has a lot of similarities to that as well. The Touareg for a five-seater is extremely heavy also at 2.7 tons. Now, this particular car has some very strong specs across the board, especially when you consider really that it is in category e now you've got a couple of good ones the supra is in that category the subaru wrx and even the rx7 so as far as japanese rivals those are some pretty good ones and the subaru is one of the most op in this class plus of course the subaru is way lighter than this car is however i would say that the bentley is actually a fantastic choice within category e because consider the specs that they give it for acceleration first of all it's a 7 out of 10 that is one of the highest in the class it's on par with the triumph trident which is a motorbike <laughs> within this category and it's not quite the 10 out of 10 that the subaru gets which is well just a little bit op but still you can kind of understand why they give it that of course being heavy it's going to be a little bit more sluggish in some circumstances but the oil drive the massive power the massive torque means it is extremely quick off the line and it gets out of corners very well as well there's no you know spinning up of the wheels or fish tailing around it just gets the job done as far as the braking you know the handling that kind of stuff well for the braking they give it another very respectable six and for such a heavy car Again, that's very good. It's one of the highest braking vehicles in the category. Once again, it is behind the Subaru. That's got a 9 out of 10. So they really do favor the WRX in this category. But still, a 6 is very good. As far as grip, curiously, they give it a 3. That doesn't really make sense to me. And it's also kind of self-contradictory because of the next score. They give it for drifting a 2 out of 10. Those two scores don't go together. You can't give it a 3 out of 10 for grip and then a 2 out of 10 for drifting. Those are exact opposites. Now, I can definitely say the 2 out of 10 for drifting is pretty accurate. It should probably be more like a 1, even a 0 technically, because it's so big, so heavy, and has so much all-wheel drive grip. It just doesn't want to drift at all. You have to physically use the e-brake 9 times out of 10, but then that doesn't make sense of the grip because the grip should be so much higher than a 3. That's insane. If anything, it should be like a 10, because it's got the all-wheel drive, so much weight grounding that power and torque as well. It's got to be one of the grippiest cars in the game, in fact, so that's ridiculous. I don't understand why they gave it that score at all. And finally, as far as top speed, well, of course it's going to be good. It's a 552 horsepower car that could do, I believe, 198 miles an hour in real life, which is still fantastic performance even today. 
So of course it's going to be high. I mean, let's be honest, it should have a 10. Within category E, that should be a 10 out of 10 by anyone's standards. I mean, it's the same category as Subarus and RX-7s. 200 miles an hour can blow them out of the water. So it shows a little bit of bias, I think, on the part of the game makers here because they give it an 8, which isn't bad, but that's also kind of ridiculous. It's one of the only, if not the only, car in this category that can actually get up around 200. So again, the bias certainly seems to be there. And although, yes, if you're on like a Gymkhana course or a, you know, a skid pan, a Subaru will win every day, but this isn't just about that. There are plenty of straights especially in certain cities like New York, for instance, where the Bentley will destroy something like a Subaru. Of course, the Subaru has the handling, an RX-7 and a Supra, they have those advantages as well, but for that sheer straight line grunt, forget it, they're not even close to the Bentley. So to me, the scores are actually pretty off when it comes to this car. If you're talking overall, then some of the scores make sense, but within the category of E, it doesn't make sense at all. It should be a couple of tens across the board, really. Not for everything. As I said, for drifting, it should be like a one, but I think that in some ways they get it right, in some ways they're way off. Overall, though, it's a car that's easy to miss because there was a time period of roughly when this game came out, Forza 3, Forza 4 even, where you would see the Continental pop up here and there. Strangely, it was never in Gran Turismo though. They stuck to just the Bentley Lamar car, of course, the Speed 8, which is a great car. But to me, I was always sad that Gran Turismo didn't have the Continental because it's one of my favorite Bentleys and it's such a good car. To be fair, in fact, it's almost a car that's better than you'd ever think it could or even should be. To be that large, that heavy, that luxurious, and yet still be as fast and as forgiving and as capable as it is, I don't think the car actually gets the credit which it deserves. It really is like Britain's answer to stuff like the SLR McLaren, the Nissan GTR, for instance, in terms of being this big, heavy technology and luxury-filled vehicle. It's a long-distance supercar, in effect, and it doesn't get as much credit as the others, and the used values certainly don't keep as much as some of those rivals. Overall, though, it's a fantastic car as far as I'm concerned. Definitely give it a look in the E category. And although you might not necessarily win on every circuit with it, you've got a pretty strong chance of always doing well, because it is just so overwhelmingly fast and really good through corners as well, but in more of a, a large, heavy, smooth kind of way, rather than a sharp, nimble JDM sort of way. But overall, that's it for my thoughts on the Bentley. Tell me down below, did you like this car? Did you use it a lot? Maybe you didn't use it much in Project Gotham. Either way, tell me down below. And of course, until next time, I'll see you then. But for now, as always... Thanks for watching.